out. All right, so welcome everybody. So we are very, very happy to invite you today to another event with the topic of Agile. Agile is now in all marks. Agile is really the way to be. And I'm sure that most of you have been in connection with this topic either directly or indirectly. And we at PMI, we want to offer a platform to um, enable people to talk about it, share knowledge, discuss, and share different opinions, different experience. And doing that, we uh, want to challenge a little bit this topic. We have uh, already have run an, an event on what is at what is um, behind the buzzword of Agile. And today we want to further question this topic with uh, the title of Agile, are you sure? So are you sure to know what is Agile? Are you sure this is the uh, good thing to apply? Is it a method? Is it um, a way? What is it uh, exactly? So we are sure you have a lot of different experience um, based on that. And we are super happy to have Ivan Pinto today, who is very experienced with uh, Agile and who wants to share his experience and give us a bit more um, vision about what is really agile based on, on his knowledge and his experience. So let's uh, move on with the slides, please. And first, before we start, we have a um, couple of um, in indications to give for this meet, for this event. So this is the same for, for all the events which are online. Be aware that the session will be recorded. It will be published on PMI Switzerland YouTube channel. There will be polls during the session, and we really count on you to participate to make it uh, interesting and lively. The slides of the event will be shared after the event. And if there are lots of questions which are not answered during the event, we will uh, reply to this in the email that we will share with all of you. All attendees will be mute during the session. Uh, interaction will be via the chat and the Q&A button. So pay attention for the one who are uh, the German version of Zoom, it's FMA. So please post your question by clicking on the Q&A session that will, uh, on the Q&A button. There will be a specific Q&A session at the end of a talk. However, if you have an understanding question or a really important question during the talk of a speaker, you can as well post it directly and our moderators will look at it and um, interrupt the speaker to, to share it. If you want to voice your question and, and more formulate it vocally, um, please raise the hand on the corresponding button. And then we will uh, unmute you to do so. And if you have any technical issue, please send a message to the host via the chat. Next one. So first, we would like to know where you are joining from. We have a lot of participants. So please answer the poll question, clicking your country. Oh, most of Switzerland, the other European country, which one are there? Some, someone in Africa, uh, someone very far away, Central and South America. Very nice. So, okay, we will not move to Swiss German. We will stay in English. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Nice to see you. All right, let's see at the, let's look at, at the agenda for today. We will shortly um, introduce to you a new community of practice, which is set up and which will start in November. Florian 
will explain you what it is and how you can uh, participate. Then we will have Stefan sharing information from PMI Switzerland, especially um, about our 20th anniversary. And there is a game related to that. So you as participants, you can win something. So pay attention. And then we will move on to Ivan, our speaker, who will introduce himself and then start with uh, his uh, presentation and topic. We will have an extended Q&A session, and then we will close with um, the usual topic of the organization, upcoming events, and um, some other topics. Right, so Florian, handing over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Florian. Now, funny enough, my last name is Ivan, but not, I'm not the real Ivan you're here to see tonight. I'm not the star of tonight. I'll just take a couple of minutes um, to talk to you about one of our initiatives, um, which is um, the Agile Community of Practice. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time. I think I have like six, seven minutes uh, to talk about this. So I'll be done in uh, six, seven minutes. Um, so uh, I've been in project management and Agile for quite a few years. Um, I think, well, I like to believe I've been in Agile at the moment when this was not called Agile, it was just called, that's how we do projects around here. And um, I'm the one uh, trying to drive uh, and, and um, make this happen, this uh, community of practice. Um, I'm here tonight to explain what we want to do um, to um, invite you to our first event. Uh, you see it here is on uh, November the 2nd. And um, also get your, your feedback and uh, any ideas you might have. Uh, obviously more than happy to talk with uh, you after the event. You'll have my contact details in just a moment. So feel free to reach out and ask any questions. Speaking about questions, since I only have like only five minutes left, um, if you have any questions, uh, please use the chat here in the tool. And also at the end, I think we have a few minutes for Q&As. So I'll be here until the end um, to answer any, any questions you might have. So um, why are we here today? Um, I think we talk a lot about Agile and I, I love the title of the presentation today, today, you know, Agile, are you sure? I think the answer would be, yeah, what else? Because um, in many situations, you know, we know Agile is the only way to go. But I think, unfortunately, Agile is a bit of victim of its own success. We talk a lot, it's a big buzzword. So to put it differently, the problem we try to solve with our small community of practice is to get back to real, real Agile. Uh, you read a lot about Agile, there are lots of presentations, there are lots of books, there are lots of trainings, lots of consultants, like everybody wants to sell you something, everybody wants to convince you of something, and you believe them, because most of them are really good in sales, you try to do it, and then what happens is that it doesn't work. It's not what they expected. And you realize that, oh, Agile might not be for me. And I think wrongly, very often, we end up blaming Agile. So that's a bit of a context here. So what we said was, you know what? We might actually be able to help with that. That's why we, we, we put it here. Uh, are you tired of fake Agile? And yeah, that's, that's a thing, fake Agile. Um, it's all this in, you know, industrial complex around agility. Um, so our purpose of in, in setting up this community is to get real. So you have a problem, you bring it here, we try to solve it with you, or not for you, but with you. Uh, you have some experience, well, you're more welcome to contribute here. So it's supposed to be like a group of friends, like true community. Now, you probably know, if you're in project management, you know about this. Everybody talks about communities. Communities is like the, the new thing in project management. We all know this. You can learn from books. You can learn from webinars. You can learn from trainers. You can learn from many, many places. But the community is where you learn experiences. You learn behavior. You learn patterns. You learn from people who are close to you in the same environment, same culture. And that's a bit what we, what we try to set up here with this. We're at the beginning, so really at the beginning, and uh, we're agile. So please expect a lot of failing fast, a lot of learning fast, and uh, a lot of people joining in. So what we suggest, and if you can go to the next slide, please, um, here with um, the solutions we propose is, um, if you have some experience with agile, I mean, real experience, it doesn't have, it has to be like great, like you change an organization, but any experience, um, join us. Come here and talk about your experience. I think everybody wants to know about how does this work in a real situation? 
or whatever that company might be. And it might be a big organization. You try to change the, the whole organization. It might be a small startup. And you're trying to make it a bit more agile. It can be a small team. It can be a big project. So I think every experience is relevant. <clears throat> it might be very personalized for you, but I think we can all understand from this experience and what we can take away and learn from that. So sharing experience, I think, is great and case studies. Um, now, obviously, this community, and I'm going to mention this at the end, is you know for PMI Switzerland, Switzerland. So as much as possible, these experiences should be something close to us, something we can relate to. Um, and again, we're not looking for marketing presentations. Uh, that's actually what we try to avoid. So do not be worried about you know, how do I present that? I'm not good at speaking. It's not about that. It's just you know, telling stories among friends. Then also it's about asking questions. I think we have lots of questions. Everybody has questions. I mean, I've been in Agile for, for many years and I still have lots of questions. I think I have more questions than answers, in fact. And I think it's kind of great if you have a group of people where you can ask these questions and see what's, what's their opinion. Um, I mean, I, I, I've been doing quite a lot of flavors of Agile. And lately, of course, you know, a lot of DA. And you, those who are familiar with DA and Discipline Agile probably know that you know, one of the paradigm in Discipline Agile is that Whatever problem you might be facing today, probably somebody already faced in the past and probably already have a solution. So ask your questions. We'll do our best to find a solution for you. you know, maybe not be the perfect solution, but at least we try to help you. And also discuss and debate and fight. I, I think it's, it's great to be able to express ideas. So um, we don't have to agree on everything. Actually, I do expect uh, some discussions and debates over that. And I think that's how we all grow. Know, learning from each other, looking at different perspectives. Um, and that's basically what this community is trying to do. So um, I, I don't have too much time here not to go into details, but that's what we plan to discuss on our call, um, the launch call in November. And I still have one more slide uh, to share with you and then I'm done. Uh, so in case this is interesting for you, and I hope it is, um, what you should do is um, book this date in your calendar so November the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. You will find the link on our website. So PMI Switzerland slash events. So you can register on that link for the event. Um, we'll share more with you about the agenda. Well, the agenda is quite simple. It's a community. So the purpose of that call is to get to know each other, introduce each other, maybe share some experiences. We'll have a few guests. We're actually working on this to get some guests that will share some of the stories already in the first event. I think that would be a nice way to start. Um, in the meantime, should you have any questions, uh, do not hesitate. Feel free to reach out. That's my email address. I will do my best to reply as soon as possible. So if you have questions about the committee of practice, if you want to contribute, if you don't know if you want to contribute, let me know. We can have a, a friendly call and we can uh, we can chat about this, this topic. Um, I know that was a bit fast. I hope you 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 uh, you're on board with this. Um, any questions? Again, chat Q and A at the end or my email address. And I think my time is up. Thank you very much, Thank you. Stefan. Thank you, Florian. So, Stefan, welcome to speak about the anniversary. Yes, hello. Hello all and thank you, Florian, for making this uh, COP, Community of Practice for PMI Switzerland, happen. I'm very curious for the 2nd of November. Uh, it's a dream of myself since a long time, so I'm very happy that we finally can start with this. Please check out our web page, uh, our events page. You will find more details, contact button, and then see you on the 2nd of November. I want to tell you that you are new here about our anniversary this year. PMI Switzerland has the 20th anniversary, 2001 we was founded. And we think this is a good reason to celebrate and we celebrate not by ourselves, unfortunately. We celebrate with our members or better said a member can celebrate this anniversary on the top of Switzerland. So we have a game and this game Everyone who taking part in our events can take part, even if he is a member or not a member of PMI Switzerland. And it is about a weekend in the Swiss Alps. It will be a voucher for you and your spouse to go to one of the famous places in Switzerland to enjoy an evening there, a lunch there, a dinner there. And how is it this done? It's very easy done. We have 20 anniversary and so we have a sentence with 20 words and in each of our events, 
we share one of the words. And today we share our word number 12. And you collect this word and put it together with the other words and send the sentence to us. But yes, okay, you are maybe the first time here with us today. And so you have no chance for the last 11 words. We soon will publish a web page on our website where you can find hints for our sentence. That means we will show you where you can find the word number one, the word number two, and so on. So please today note your word number 12. And the word number 12 is judgment. Put it on a paper, go to our webpage in the, in the next weeks to find a hint for our other words and take part, send us the message with the 20 words and go to a wonderful place a weekend with your spruce. Thank you very much. And now I wish you a good and valuable evening with Celia and Florian and Ivan. Goodbye, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan. So now we are very, very excited to welcome Ivan. And first, so Ivan, please tell us a little bit about your background, what brings you here. Yes, well, uh, thanks, first of all, thanks uh, for the invitation, I'm honored by it. And uh, yes, uh, about myself, uh, well, um, I'm an engineer by trade. I went for uh, engineering school, uh, actually it's civil engineering, and I got into project management early on, working for a EPC uh, contractor, engineering procurement and construction, uh, building oil refineries in South America. Um, but after that, um, kind of like moved into social project management. So um, I'm, my family was originally from Spain, so we moved back. And uh, um, I started working for a nonprofit organization managing uh, social programs from Spain uh, through Latin America. And eventually I got into technology and, and due to the fact that NGOs are always lacking money. So I had to take over some of the responsibilities, technical responsibilities within the organization. So I did some um, web development, uh, sysadmin, and eventually I got uh, myself into technology that I decided to move fields and get into actually development uh, and that's how I got into Agile. That was the beginning of 2000, 2006, about that. So I've been through that, but working for the nonprofit organization, I got into these social programs. Uh, I went into anthropology school in order to, uh, well, to increase your awareness of cultures and, and these programs. So, and eventually I got into human computer interaction from the anthropology perspective. So. That also got me into technology and user experience and, and user interfacing and how we humans communicate and interface and how we actually right now outsource some of our um, human skills into machines. You know, uh, an example is when was it last time you actually remember a phone number because you have a, a machine in your hand, so you no longer, but I remember when I was a kid, I had to remember numbers, you know? But anyways, uh, that has been kind of like uh, my um, experience. And I've been uh, working for, I mean, in software development, like 20, well, 15 years. Uh, and that's how, and as I said this before, got into this agile methodology for me was like a new thing. Uh, what was all about, so that, also got me interested. And since there, I've been working as a freelancer, working for a couple of universities in Spain, uh, got into project management, eventually product owner and product manager. And this is the work I do now. Um, I manage a product for a company based in Amsterdam. And that's uh, basically my, my journey, uh, professional journey. And and having said that, uh, I would like just to, you know, just to shoot it up and uh, let me share my screen so we can get into uh, the matter. Um, okay, share the screen, desktop, share. 
I hope you all can see my screen. Um, I'm gonna take that. Okay, great, good. Okay, so why are we here? Agile, are you sure? That's the, uh, the title uh, and the question, is it, is it gold, everything that shines? And as Florian said, it seems like everything that has agile on it, not necessarily is agile in essence. Uh, so the idea uh, or our time together uh, today uh, will be uh, to, to dive into this. But before getting into our goals, I would like to let you know uh, some assumptions I'm making. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that we all know about agile methodologies, frameworks, uh, processes. So I'm not going to dive into that, even though we, we have a Q&A. So if we want to dive into that, we can have that after uh, in the Q&A section. However, I'm not going to get into that in this presentation. There's, we can do it, but not necessarily in this presentation. Uh, well, Q&A, uh, Celia already explained, there will be a Q&A session at the end of, uh, of this talk. So feel free, uh, make your notes, send those uh, questions to the Q&A chat. You have an option here in Zoom where you can use that. And our goals, okay. so. For this session, uh, I would say Agile, and, and again, as Florian mentioned, it's, it's a very important uh, business and process breakthrough in the last 20 years, you know? However, all that glitters is not gold, you know? So after this session, and uh, one of uh, our goals would be, we should be able to recognize the essence of the Agile, you know? And also to define agility or Agile to really understand and know, and also recognize our own ways of operating in the in agile in agility you know and and it's funny because it's a, it's a it's a word that can be a verb sometimes it's a it's a uh, i don't know but anyways agile as the way we live agile as the way we operate in our project management so where do we start this is the uh, the question so i will start with us, with you, the project manager, the product manager, the person who is tasked with a new project or product. Uh, and, and that's what we do, right? I mean, when we start a project, uh, we take a statement of work, a project charter, business case, and then we start and get ourselves into the road. Uh, and that's, that's where I want to start, in the road where we are in. And for me, the road is the environment. I mean where this project is gonna take place uh, because this is where everything starts. And it's very important. Uh, so to talk about project management is to talk about the environment where this project is executed, but also no project is ex nihilo, meaning it doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, every project uh, satisfies a market demand, a business need, uh, strategic opportunity, social need, uh, environmental consideration, customer request, legal requirement, et cetera, et cetera. So understanding that uh, we live in a current context and I don't have to explain this, but now with COVID, see how everything is changing in terms of, well, new strains are still being found of the COVID uh, this is bringing, or this time is bringing economical challenges. Uh, I know, well, and I know in Switzerland, I have a friend who lives there. I know the house market, just the same way in Holland, it's crazy after COVID. Uh, so these is bringing inflation. We're reading this in the papers. So everywhere uh, prices are going up. So supply chain challenges. Uh, we also reading about this. I have a friend who works in, in supply chain and a container that used to cost $2,000. Now it's about 15, 17,000. So that's part of the issue. And also there are not too many available. So that is also part of the challenges we're seeing in our current uh, context. Uh, well, I just said market inflation, we're reading that and it's happening all across Europe, the US, and other, other markets. So this is what the people work to talk about 
VUCA world. Uh, uh, I know probably for many of you, it's not the first time you found or see this word, but basically this is an acronym uh, for uh, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Uh, and many people say this is the kind of the world where we are in now. This is how things operate in an ever-changing state. Uh, so it's interesting because when you go into the uh, PMI uh, body of knowledge, uh, this is, it always talks about enterprise environmental factors, right? So it's, it's interesting. Uh, when I got my PMP on stunning, I remember there were, there were like 49 processes and you have to check me on this. Probably it has changed on the sixth and seventh edition. But at that time, it was about 40, 49 uh, processes that include this as input, the, the environmental enterprise, enterprise environmental factor. So that's, for me, this is a very interesting. And also as a project manager, this is a, bit, a high consideration in where are we actually developing uh, our project or our product, you know, not only from the market perspective or marketing perspective, but also what's going on uh, as a glo global, you know, uh, awareness of, of what's, what's, where it's a project in. So that's what I would like to start. And I'd like to start here because uh, at the end, this is where our project, our product, whatever we're doing is gonna be being developed. So. Uh, as Heraclitus, uh, a, a Greek philosopher, said, nothing is constant except change. So this is where we are now. And we all know about this. You know, the, the world is it's always changing. Every time we try to put a product out there, uh, the market necessity has changed. So we might need to redo things and, and yes, and change and try to pivot into another or different need uh, if it's a, a product you want to sell, but it might be a social need. Uh, and, and, and this is what's happening. And let me give you an example for this. Uh, if you see this image, I know you recognize this. Uh, you know what happened with the handheld market since 1993. I don't know if you are old enough uh, to have seen a Newton from Apple back in the 93. I was lucky enough to see one uh, when I was a preteen. And, um, but it was, it was like, you know, crazy to see what was doing, but you see the market was not ready for it. Uh, it was a flop. It was a, it, actually they didn't last like a year or even less, I'd say. But just a few years later, Palm came up with the Palm. You know, I don't know if you remember those, the Palm, Palm 3, Palm 5, Palm, Palm 7. So they came up with this new OS, Palm OS. So. It started as the new thing. So everyone was having a palm. So the market was ready for it. And people thought, okay, this is it. But then a new player came, RIM. RIM came up with the BlackBerry and BlackBerry started to took over. Then Microsoft came with uh, Windows Mobile. And that was kind of like the, three, the, me, the main three players at that time. And then Apple came up with the iPhone and Android moved into a more graphical interface. So that's what we have right now. So uh, what, what do I bring this example in? It's basically, you see in, in 20, 25 years, uh, how things change and market changes, uh, not necessarily because I have it on my hands and I can produce it, not necessarily means that I will sell it. Uh, that's not, doesn't mean that people may want it, might be too early for them as we, saw with the Apple Newton, uh, then, you know, people start getting into this. And nowadays there are two main players regarding OSs. It's, it's iPhone with iOS and Android, right? So the changes, uh, the society in which we try to uh, develop our projects and our products are the challenges that we all deal with. And this is the challenge uh, all developers back in the 80s and 90s uh, had to face. And that's how they came up with the Agile uh, Manifesto. A group of people got together in 2001 and they decided to talk about, uh, we would like to do things not necessarily differently, but better in, in terms of 
how can we communicate with our customer? How can we include the changes? Because that uh, chain was very slow. By the time you develop something, you have to go back to all to your diagrams and uh, architectural diagrams in order to get that change ready. But in the past, that used to take months and sometimes depending on the, the, of the project years. So by the time that change was implemented, probably the need was no longer there. So that's how this group of people uh, got uh, together and created this agile manifesto. And that was the start of everything. This starts from the software world. These are developers, people managing software projects, trying to come up with new ways uh, of doing things. So, and having said this, and getting now into Agile, I would like to um, use one of the tools uh, that PMI Switzerland has, and it's a mentee. And I'm gonna show you a question and get your, um, I was gonna say your iPhones, your phones, your, uh, your mobile phones ready, your cameras, because I'm gonna show you a QR code, QR code and a, or a code. So you can go to menti.com and answer this for me, please. So take your time, uh, point your camera to this QR code. Uh, everyone seeing the QR code? I hope everyone is. If, if it's not working for you, you can go to menti.com and, um, and input that code uh, um, that's showing in the, in the screen, 91274605. I feel like a like in the lottery. Nine, one, two, seven, winner, four, six, oh five, oh five. So um, are you all voting? Let me reload here. Okay, we got 11 responses. Okay, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> oh, that's, I like that an excuse to do whatever we want in the project. <laughs> a new methodology to manage projects, but a faster way to do things, it's winning. So we have what, 20, we have how many participants? Like 30, 30 something? Are you, we have 36, are you all voting? Take your time. Yes. A new methodology is coming, but the faster wave is winning. Okay. So I hope um, you can still vote if you want, but uh, I hope by the end of this uh, talk, we will have a better understanding of what really agile is. So if it's a new methodology, is a faster way of doing things, is the opposite of the waterfall model, or it's just an excuse to do uh, whatever I want in a project. I've, I've, I've listened and, and I've heard developers uh, telling me that they don't need to estimate a user story now because they are agile, you know? So this is the kind of things, and that's why I think it's very important that we go uh, with uh, this talks and actually what uh, the, the chapter just presented as community of practice, I think is a very important thing to do you get together, you learn together, uh, but also you don't damage uh, these processes, methodologies, ways of doing things, because at the end, it's just the word. And I can place agile everywhere. So now that I'm agile, I can do anything, you know? So I think it's, it's a, a very uh, good idea, a very good uh, opportunity to learn and also to, to give, not only to, to obtain knowledge, but also to give. And I know, Many of you uh, can do that. I've seen some of the uh, people who have actually on LinkedIn uh, accepted and said that they will come. You always see, you know, all the certifications. You see an, a name, a last name, and you know how it is. You know how it works. So I'd, I'd said this is people who knows who can give. So I also invite you join your community of practice wherever you are. If you're not in Switzerland, but there should be a chapter trying to start a community of practice. Uh, anyways. We will continue. It seems like I was doing a little commercial for the community of practice, but um, what is Agile? So we got into this because when we start, there is this environment. The environment is an ever-changing environment. So people got in 2001 together, let's try to get this thing done. Let's, how do we crack this? How we can make 
changes faster? How can we implement? How we can move things to market? How can we pr release to prod easily and faster? So that's how they came, they came up with this agile thing. Okay, last one just came in. So moving on, having or living or being in a VUCA world in this volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world in which we live in. So that's where the Agile Manifesto comes. So the Agile Manifesto basically rests firmly in two big columns. And the columns are the values and the principle. And I'm gonna try to go, you know, very, you know, I'm gonna reduce, we're not gonna go into detail. However, it's very important we stop here so, because from here we can then start understanding and not only giving a definition, but also seeing how are we operating based on these values and principles. So when, when it comes to values, these are the four values the Agile Manifesto tells us. First one is individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Another one, working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiations. Responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there is value in the items on the right, or in this case, at the bottom, we value the items at the top, the ones in bold. You know, this was copied just exactly how it is on the web page. You can go to agilemanifesto.org. You will find it in almost every language, uh, but you will, it's just a simple website. You can tell it was done or made back in 2001. It looks very old. It looks like a GeoCities page. If you are old enough to remember GeoCities or Yahoo when Google was not even a thing, but, um, but it's there, it has been there. So it's only two pages, one for values and all, and all these languages and the principle. So you can tell by, by what these people is, are telling us, what they're telling us is there, there's things burning, burning with them and, and actually bugging them and it's, to develop software before Agile Manifesto, uh, it was all about processes, tools, documentation, negotiation, and the plan. You have to follow a plan. So this was killing them. It was killing them. So that's how they came up with this. For me to understand what they're trying to do, for me, a, a, an image, it's better than a thousand words, you know? So for me, it works this way. For me, it's, a group of people, and this is what we see there, individuals and, and their interactions, a group of people that make a software. In this case, we're talking about software. We're talking about the Agile Manifesto based in software. We will talk, it's no longer a software thing, you know, the Agile, but they develop a software with the customer collaboration. In the past or before Agile, it was just about sign the contract, whatever the contract says, we will do. But now what they're saying is, no, 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 you have to come closer to us. You have to as a customer, you have to build this with us while we give these uh, working software to you. So in all this process, uh, they allow changes to happen. So if customer will bring new requirements, they, will they were able or they should be able to respond to those changes quicker and all these being done in a ever changing environment. And that's how, why it has like a, like a place there, you know, it, it sits like in a mat. And all this is to give our customers what our customer needs. You know, for me, that, that it's, it's a process. We, there is a customer, there's a group of people, there is collaboration to give this value, this, in this case, a software, in everything is done in this ever-changing uh, environment and where we respond to change, we accept it and we respond to it instead of just avoiding it by the excuse of following a plan. So that's for the values. But when we come for, um, for the principles, there are 12 of them. So as you see, well, I can say, I can just read in the bold part, satisfy the customer, first one. Second, welcome changing requirements. Even late in development, I work with developers. I've been a developer once, and this is what most developers hate. Oh you know, we had this plan for this print, the user story had this as a goal, but now we need to change it because now the requirement is different. Oh, that kills them. 
oh, why didn't you tell me this before? You know, but this is agile. Ag I mean, this principle, we're talking about principles of agile, welcoming changing requirements, even late in development. Deliver working solutions frequently. That is another uh, of the things of Agile. Work together. I mean, we are a group of people and now people will not only on Agile, but doing Scrum, they're talking about tribes, squads, trying to get together even from multidisciplinary fields in order to get together for a product, for a project. Uh, motivated individual support and trust. Also face-to-face -face conversations. This is very important in the past, you know, where the world that we're coming from, it was just about follow the rules, send me a memo. And if it's in the memo, I will do it, you know, but in this case, or just go to a meeting, you know, but face-to-face -face conversation, working solutions are the primary measure of progress. This is very important. Progress is not necessarily how many man days or how many, working hours I log in the system. It's the feature, is it working in production? Are we delivering a working solution? This is what Agile Manifesto is saying in number seven. Sustainable development. Uh, so everything we do has to be sustainable in time. It's just not something to do once. Uh, technical excellence, only because we are accepting change doesn't mean that we will do this badly, you know, we will, it will be a shaky house. No, no, no. We need to follow or look for technical excellence. Simplicity, number 10, I like that one because sometimes in my experience, when you talk to technical people and you offer them a challenge, we need to fix this or we need to create whatever, they always come with a very nice solution. Uh, but I would say most of the time, is an overkill. They will try to bring the best technology because this thing just came out. Uh, this is a new database uh, or is a new language. Or we should try this because the front end, the UI, whatever. So it's like a, and, and I like this simplicity to live in agile is to live simple. Does it do what we need? One example that I have is uh, in my job, we needed in, in, in our domain, we needed one specific feature for a website. And it was just something, uh, a capability to upload a file and send it to a CRM, just that. We talked to uh, architects and people and the solution they gave us came up in, or it was about to come up live, probably six to eight months. At the end, we took an API from the CRM we put it on the website and we hire a vendor just to scan those files in order to uh, comply with GDPR and all that stuff. That took us one, two sprints to do. So at the end, what they were offering, it was like security. Uh, if, if you're into technology and AWS, they were talking about lambdas, instances, uh, scanning those files. So it was like six months of work where one or two spring, meaning two weeks or four weeks, we just had it and it's working and it's, it's just that. So this is why I like simplicity. Does it work? Does it really, uh, does the job? We don't need to overkill anything, you know? So self-organizing teams, this is one of the things that the Agile has brought, self-organizing. Let the, the team decide how to do things. Don't focus on the, what I mean, don't on the how. Just focused on the why. I mean, just let them do their job. Just what do you want? What do you need? Okay, let them decide. They might need to go into simplicity, but self-organizing team is one of the principles that Agile has bring. And also reflect and adjust. Reflect and adjust. Not only do things only because we have done it this way all the time, but let's stop. Let's reflect how we have done this, how this, why this happened or why didn't this happen. So allow us to stop and reflect. I think this is there because at the end you need to adjust, you need to pivot, you need to refine your vision, your view and how you do things. So after 
reading this or seeing this, you see that number one for agile in these principles is our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable solutions. For me, this is what Agile is all about. And this is one of the messages I bring. It's all about satisfying the customer. He has been lately and over-focused on methodologies, on ways of doing things, but at the end is to satisfy the customer. So if you allow me to rearrange this uh, 12 principles, I will put it this way. In the center, satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable solutions. Satisfy the customer. This is our vision. This is what, even if it's a, a social need, the society is your customer, is your end user. So satisfy them. It's a legal requirement. Satisfy the lawyers that are demanding that legal requirement. Is a business case, satisfy the customer that will use your product. That is the center of these principles. And around that center is the rest. And if you allow me just to put in one word and we can change the words, but for me, what those 12 principles are talking about are satisfying the customer by adapting, delivering, collaborating, management, of your people, your talent, communicate, do metrics, measure progress, measure that progress, quality, the technical excellence we talked about, simplicity, don't overkill solutions, go for the simple things. How, this is the hardest part, you know, uh, when they say uh, less is more, I think that is a very, very hard thing to do because uh, sometimes we tend to overkill, I guess might be in our nature, but it's hard to identify when you're building anything, a house, a refinery, a software, it's not hard to add things and to build so we will hold your solution, your building. The hardest part is to identify what is not needed so your building still holds. I think simplicity is something that we might need to acquire skills, work on it, uh, usually, well, I've seen in my experience, in my experience, a lot of people overkill solutions. Decision making, allow the people who are close to, in this case, the software or the working environment to make the decision. Don't let, this is what I tell, don't let decisions only be made at the top level. Try and allow the people uh, who are, in this case, into the hands coding to make some decisions and then monitor and review. For me, this sounds a lot, and it makes a lot of sense when you compare this with the body of knowledge from PMI. At the end, I'm not talking about, it's the same, I'm not saying these are processes. No, no, I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is what Agile and the Agile Manifesto is offering is to is a wake up call and say, listen, is to satisfy your customer and do it through this way or do it this way. Adapt, deliver it, collaborate, Manage your people, communicate in a better and efficient way, face-to-face, -face, metric, uh, measure that progress, go for high quality, simple things, don't overkill, allow people to take decisions uh, and monitor and review. So having said this, uh, when it comes to uh, then a lot of questions, right? Because if this is what the Agile Manifesto and the Agile, the people who came up with this is telling us, then what is Agile? And this is the big question. And as many of you answered, uh, some people, you know, there were some tricky questions. There were only four options. And I know that it should have been more like an open text or input field. But if you see Agile, if we focused on the manifesto and the, I mean, number one principle is satisfy the customer, that moves us away from a methodology. And this is another thing that if we need to take something from this talk, would be this would be one of those. Agile is not a methodology. A method is something you do, it's a process you hope you do to get the, the results. But every method is based on a theoretical framework. And this happens in academia, it happens in, in business world. So agile at the end, more than a method might be 
a theoretical framework, a way of understanding the world, a way of seeing the world. Because when you follow those principles and you live into adapt, deliver, manage, decision-making, progress, high quality, simplicity, that can be applied to any other business environment. And this is what is happening now. So what is agile? And if you allow me, for me, agile first is not a methodology, but what it is for me, it's a way of seeing things. Might be new for some people, but as Florian said, probably is, this is the way we have been done it. Now it has a name, but at the end, it's, for me, it's like new glasses or glasses. You see the world through them. So being agile or living in the agile world means that those principles are integrated in my way of doing things as a project or product manager, but also in my company culture, in my startup, whatever I work, uh, those are integrated. So agile, again, is not a methodology. It's more a way of understanding. It's a culture. It's a way of doing things, you know, uh, than what is important to define agility or agile. I think it's, this is answering this one because of the previous one. Yes, it's not a methodology. So we need to define, we need to know based on the agile manifesto what they're saying. They're, they're not talking, this is the new way of doing things. This is the new process you have to follow. This is, no, no, they're not prescribing anything. What they're giving us is principles and values that can be applied everywhere. And this is interesting, the difference between a principle and a method. The method, usually, it's framed into a social cultural environment. So methods usually only fit in that environment, while a principle is not bound by any environment. So a principle can be applied everywhere, anytime. And that is a big difference when you based agile in principles and not in methods. Because methods comes later. How do I take these principles and apply in my way of working and I start doing things based on this principle? These people who came up with the agile manifesto, two guys from that, uh, who actually got in that meeting, they're the most famous one, there are two, three of them. But one is Kiefer, uh, Sutherland. I was going to do say Kiefer, the actor. No, Sutherland. I forgot his uh, first name. And another one is Ken Schwab. So they actually, the question they came up with was, okay, with these values and principles, how can we go and actually do this? Why is it important to define this? And how can we start working? And they came up with Scrum, basically. So Scrum is a framework. See, now we're moving into framework. We were talking about principles and values. Now they said, okay, with these principles and values, how can we do actually, actually bring, what can we bring to the development team and work on this? So Scrum was born under that thinking. And actually these two guys, they ended up founding two different organizations. One is the Scrum Alliance. And the other one is scrum.org. And these are the main certification uh, organizations uh, in the world now, based on, on for Scrum, well, product owners, Scrum master, and all that. But that was the thinking of okay, based on this, how are we going to do it? You know, so is it agile? Everything that has a name on it, I would say no. And and yes, I mean not because it has agile, it's agile. And and you even see this a lot in LinkedIn uh, You know, this job postings and agile project manager, agile business analyst, agile, I don't know, everything is like, we're looking for agile. Probably what they, I, I don't know, this is speculation, probably what they're looking for is someone who knows Scrum and is a project manager who understands Scrum. But if they were looking for an agile, everyone should be agile because if you're going to join my organization, I want you to focus on the customer first. And I think that is the first agile thing you can do customer focus. This is satisfy your customer through delivering value. How can we recognize that something is, is uh, uh, well, it's missing an S, it's really agile. I think the values and principle, just use them as, you know, like a picture and see what's going on in your organization or probably how you do things, you know? 
how can we recognize whatever you do has number one principle priority of satisfying your customer or you just satisfying your management or you just satisfying a process and, and this is what i've found sometimes people is so in love with the process that they only talk about the process and the process is the main conversation and they just want to improve the process and it's about the process but the process or that conversation and i think it's important only comes after we focus and satisfying our customers can a project oh this is a good one can a project be waterfall and be agile at the same time i'll leave that to you another mentee same code same qr code and let me know what do you guys think can a project be waterfall and agile at the same time Voting, let me reload this. It's coming. Okay, totally. If done right, yes. No way, never. Oh, four, four, totally. If done right, yes. Nice, yes. I mean, this is what I'm saying. And if you ask me, uh, can a waterfall be agile? If you have only one principle and that principle is customer focused, satisfy your customer, it doesn't matter. This is my thinking. You don't have to agree, but it doesn't matter what methodology I use. It doesn't matter how I do it. it it's all about satisfying my customer. But if I only take the 11, the remaining 11 principles and apply it, of course, I know it might be difficult for a waterfall project to review every two weeks, but probably you do it every three months. I've worked in waterfall projects, building oil refineries and uh, uh, tank storage farms in, in South America. And always, there was always a review meeting every three months with the customer, with QAs, with everyone involved. Probably you cannot do it in every two weeks because software is software. You can just change a line right there. If you change the specification for a tank who's that storage oil, that takes time. There's a lot of healthy consideration, uh, environmental ones, legal ones. So, but at the end, if you do it right, if you, actually have the, the culture, the mentality, the way of seeing things, I believe it can. And I say this because this is, with Agile, this is always this, you know, is if it's waterfall, cannot be Agile. If it's Agile, Agile is a new thing and this is the old thinking, you know? We like to dwell on these zeros and ones, you know, when, they, when it's a zero, it cannot be one. When it's one, it cannot be zero. So. Having said that, and talking about what is agile, what is important, why it's important, is it agile? How can we recognize can a project can be waterfall and agile at the same time? How about Scrum, Kanban, et cetera? Yeah, what I said before, these are only methodologies, ways of carry on with your mentality, your worldview, the way of doing things. And now you set up and do through a methodology, through a framework, through a process, through a a good practices, you know, uh, but it's based on agility, but it's not because you use Kanban doesn't make you agile. Because if you use Kanban, but you focused only on your people and not in the customer, so you're not filling up this 12 principle. So the genie is out of the bottle and we all know that. Uh, it's, no, it's no longer a software thing. It's uh, it's everywhere. And one of the uh, example is PMI. PMI acquired Discipline Agile. I don't know if you have followed this. And what Discipline Agile is doing is taking this agile way of thinking into different fields, finances, purchasing, procurement, uh, not only development, engineering, everywhere in, in the organization. So the, the metaphor there is why, I mean, if an F1 car would have a great engine, 
that it's working under agility, but then the rest of the car is not. And this is what it's happening. Some development teams and companies are into agile way of thinking, into agile doing, while the rest of the company is living in a different world and not necessarily based on these uh, customer satisfaction principles. So what Discipline Agile is trying to do is to take this with seeing the world into different parts of the organization. And also we do this in the hybrid landscape. For me, and what I said before, uh, we tend to think in binary ways. When it's zero, cannot be one. When it's one, cannot be zero. If it's waterfall, cannot be agile. If it's agile, cannot be waterfall. But I, I offer and I tell people, let's try to think in quantum physics way, meaning in Newtonian physics, of course, when a body is occupying space, no other body can occupy that space. A bottle is there and only a bottle can be there. However, in the quantum world, we know that it's different. Depending of the observer, a particle can be at the same time in two places. So we, it's hard for our Newtonian minds to understand how something can be at the same time in two different places because we're living in the Newtonian world where only one thing of mass can only hold place, 3D space in one place. So, but I think we need to move into project management into this quantum physics or the paradox, living paradox. Can we do agile? Can we do this the same way? We don't need to throw away everything only because this is the new thing. So in my experience, and, and I'm about to, uh, to close now, in my experience, the way I see this, and, and, and in order just to wrap it up, uh, we live in this book world, ever changing, our environmental factors, uh, everything that is going to impact our project. And having a mindset, not a methodology, but having an agile mindset, a worldview that helps me to start into the project or the product. And now when I'm there, when I am there, is when I start talking or thinking about methodology, frameworks. This is basically what I use in my work for my, the product I manage. We do development under Scrum, uh, but we have a support team that uses Kanban and ETL in order to manage all support requests. At the same time, we have a specific projects, PMI, body of knowledge, that is a must. Then everything related to the infrastructure and cloud engineering, DevOps. DevOps, when you see the definition is a set of good practices. It doesn't even define itself as a framework or methodology, it's just a set of good practices. This is in the past what sysadmins would do. DevOps are the new sysadmins, but it's more than that, right? And CRIPS, this is a cross industry uh, data mining process that we use for uh, everything that is data related. But see, that's it. Agile is away from these things. It's, it's above this thing. So whatever, methodology I need or framework, we will use it under this mindset. So for me, this is the beauty, the beauty of, of, of agile as a mindset and not as a methodology. So to take out home, and with this, I'm about to finish. You see the blue bar is about to touch the, um, the figures at the right hand side. Agile is a mindset, not a methodology. Agile focuses in customer satisfaction by delivering value. Then we need to define value. That might need another talk. What is value? Because not necessarily it is always money and we all know that. Want to be agile? Incorporate values and principles in your culture, in your way of doing, in the way we perform and do our projects. And Recommendation, live in the quantum mindset. Allow paradox to live in our minds. Nothing is blue and black. There's a lot of gray between. So just to finish, and the big question is, are you agile? Are you sure? So having said this, I would allow Celia to start uh, the QA. So I'm open. Let's uh, discuss if anyone wants to uh, talk on, we're here, we still have uh, time. Thanks a lot. And uh, Celia, you can take over the slides. 
Thank you very much, Evan. So it was really, really interesting. So we see the development of uh, agile mining with your talk. So now we are very curious about what do the participants think, if they have any questions. So there has been already one question um, um, placed about the financial impact mm -hmm. of Agile. So the question is, how do you track financials and costs effectively within the Agile framework? With a constant fast evolving implementation, so the budget stays the same, but accommodating so many changes on the fly seems to risk overrun in the cost. And maybe there is another financial uh, question as well, which, which can be grouped with this one. But would be, isn't Agile the way for consulting companies to make money via change permanent uh, changed requirements? Um, so the consulting company says, yeah, you are free as a customer to change your requirement as long as you pay for, for it. So. So question to you, financial aspect. Yeah, well, yeah, just to go into the, uh, the first one you mentioned, financial. This is, uh, I briefly spoke about um, uh, discipline agile and how agile is going into this, uh, other, into these or other areas of the organization. Uh, this is, well, it depends on how you see it. The, the, the golden triangle of project management always stays, even in, in agile. I mean, you either go for a schedule, scope, and money. I mean, there is no way. I mean, if you have many changes, of course, anything has to change. Either you take longer time with the same budget, or you do it with the, I mean, the planned time, but you need more money in order to do it, even if the scope changes. I think that is a, that is a principle, like immutable, immovable principle. However, with what, what it's happening, and this is very important. Uh, we're going, we're, I think we're talking about Scrum development because in Scrum, uh, when you do by the hour, it's not necessarily the best way to do it or the, the best framework to use. Uh, because for me, it's Scrum works when you have a Scrum team, usually it's like from six to nine people. You have a product owner, Scrum master, developers, QA, one of them is the technical lead, and you have them hired. So you don't worry about the cost, but now you worry about the functionalities, the scope, the delivery, the priorities. And this is in product management and product owners. This is the, the crack of the head is what and how do we prioritize? So if you have a scrum team by the hour, uh, and you know they work this amount of hour, it's just about prioritization because in that way you can keep your budget. But if, if they say, no, in order to do this, we need to add more developers or more hours, then is when things get complicated. But I would recommend uh, looking to Discipline Agile and how this can be impacted in, into uh, other uh, areas of the organization. But yes, when it comes to financial, I think you have to decide how you're going to set up that because when you have the capacity and you pay, this is for our vendors. This is what we do at the company. We said, okay, give me a scrum team to a vendor. So it's like an extended team. So we don't worry about, we know the budget is for one scrum team, four guys, one QA, technical lead, I mean, developer, sorry, uh, technical lead, scrum master, product owner for like eight persons. You put that in a year. So whatever that group of people, Scrum team can do, that's what they will do. Then it's a problem or a challenge for the product owner or product manager to prioritize. But financially, you have the same uh, budget every month because you have hired. So this is why nowadays is, it's, it's becoming more and more uh, popular for companies to offer extended teams. So you no longer need to hire them and, and do, no, another company will do. So you just say, give me this for a year, two years and whatever they can develop, it's up to us just to prioritize. So I hope uh, that um, answered uh, that question about financial. Uh, I can always 
on my LinkedIn. I can always uh, con uh, you contact me if you want to keep talking about this. Uh, we can do that. I, um, with the agile mindset, another question. With the agile mindset, is the notion of getting things done faster an important one? Yes, at the end, it's about how long will I take to satisfy the customer? How long will I take to satisfy society's need? How long do I take or do we take uh, to comply with this legal requirement? I remember when GDPR came up in 2019. Uh, so it was, okay, see, this is an ever uh, changing world. This is enterprise, environmental factors. We, no one knew, we knew about these things. So when it came up or about to came up, you have to change. So yes, how fast? You, you're you not going to refine GDPR and do, no, no, you just want to comply and comply well, of course. You, you want to do things right. But yes, it's about how fast. And, and actually by allowing change, you are faster in ways of responding to the changes, you know? So I think, yes, it's a very important notion in Agile. And this is one of the things that we're fighting back in the, if you read history of software development back in the 70s, 80s, everything was about documentation. And once the documentation was done is when they will start developing. And by the time they were done, they might have a different set of documentation and then they will need to implement that change. So this is one of the pains they were trying to ease in this process. But yes, it's a very important one. Uh, and how fast, you, that's, that's why you measure your progress. It's one of the principles. That's why you do these metrics in order to do that. If you do a Scrum, a Scrum is the preferred way to develop software nowadays. It's not the only one. It's not, it can be done Kanban, stream programming, other ways. But uh, you measure your story, uh, use, uh, story points, your effort, how much this will cost, you know? But yes, it's a very important, but again, golden triangle, it stays like a shining triangle on top of a pyramid, you know? But uh, even with Agile, if you, you wanna do it faster, you need to move it, you know, the angles of the triangle. Uh, you can give us an example where you applied Agile versus traditional mindset and how and why it worked. Well, again, you know, we do, um, I do a project, a product management, but sometimes in order to comply, you need to do a project. And you know the basic difference, right? Uh, or let me allow the basic difference uh, between a product and a project and using PMI's definition of a project is a project has an ending, has a final date. You deliver that project and that's it. A product in the country is an ongoing effort. It's something you developed and you refine, you refine. A good product manager, I would say, needs to listen to the VUCA world, to the market, to what others are. Uh, I mean, how is the, the users using my product? If I'm selling, how much are they selling? If it's satisfying just a social need, how is it set? So it's more like a relationship just to hear. That's why it's very important for product managers to, that's I love anthropology because in product management, you do a lot of hypotheses. And should this work? If we try this, will this work for my product? Will I sell more? Will people be more satisfied? So it's like a process. So this is the main difference. So uh, when you manage a product, you see sometimes like this um, uh, GDPR, that has an end date. I remember it was May, I think, May uh, 2019. We need to comply with GDPR rules in Europe. So you set up a project, even though it's for a product, but you set up a team to do a project with a Gantt, with a triangle, with a scope. And, and for us, even though these, in this way, you do more uh, scrum development, they were doing just, okay, we need this. 155 tasks, and we need to do these tasks uh, by the end of May in order to comply to the GDPR. So in a way, and we have done this, I've done this for uh, AWS migrations. It has an ending date, I go for PMI, body of knowledge. Give me a Gantt, tell me all the epics or all the tasks, uh, give me a, a work uh, breakdown structure. And that's how you bring the, what we call traditional, but for me, it's a, it's a way to do a project 
uh, uh, develop a project. So, uh, and it worked together. I mean, same vendor, in this case, same vendor. One team was doing Scrum, developing the product, applying what we were listening from the customers, in implementing that in as a new feature, while another team, same vendor, was working under PMI, body of knowledge and mentality, Gantt, WBS, uh, tell me when this is going to be done. So, and we use sprints for that because what we brought was, okay, we should reflect. We should have a retrospective. We should have a sprint review. We should have a planning. And, and we took that from Scrum. This is part of the Scrum ritual. So at the end, we have this hybrid. It was again, it was a, I mean, work breakdown structure, but we use this reflect. Let's allow the team to come up with the solution. So in a way, that's for me, the hybrid model that I live in. So it's not necessarily agile and scrum and I'm like a now the most agile. No, no, no. It has to do with, okay, let's do this in the agile mindset, you know? Uh, another one, I hope that uh, satisfied your answer, your question, I'm sorry. The agile mindset is pretty logical and makes sense for me, but not to everyone. Having said that, how can we teach or incorporate others who do not think in an agile way? Well, um, you have to be, uh, you have to, you have to leave it. I, I would say many, and, and this I will go more into psychology and anthropology, but I think what we are, it shows. So the best way for me to teach people in the people I manage, the, the, my colleagues, is to do it, to live it, to have these principles very, very live in my way of doing things. So by the time I speak about them, I can say, listen how I have done this. So in a way, uh, the best way to teach is to live and, and to live it and also speak it. But uh, yes, not everyone has the opportunity to come to a talk and talk to 40 some people, um, but yeah, I mean, in, in the organization you're in, I think the best way is uh, to incorporate first those principles and values from Agile into our way of doing, and then explaining, explaining what we're doing. This is the focus, these are the principles and the values. This is the way I've found it works for me. Uh, we can also recommend, we can also, there are good training, but I'm, as Florian said, uh, I'm not here to tell anything. I don't know any um, agile training, which one is best than the other. I would say just, uh, Enrique, uh, incorporate those values, having that mindset and allow others to see you. I think that's the way it has worked for me. Uh, and I hope that uh, answers that. Um, any other questions? Uh, I don't, I think, uh, if you work in a highly regulated environment, what framework have you seen works well? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I agree with Stefan. There's no out of the box. It, it depends. Uh, it, it would need to be seen, I mean, just to study what is that um, uh, regulated environment and what framework works, because I, I don't know, I, it would be hard for me to uh, answer. But um, but yeah, that yeah, I would need for me. I would need to to understand more about your environment and those regulations, and what are you building. But at the end, listen. If you really want to satisfy your customer, forget about the framework. Okay, use whatever it needs you, whatever suits you. It's not about a framework or methodology. I'm talking about a mindset, a way of doing things. So uh, probably you might need to know more about methodologies, just to under, understand which one serves you better. But at the end, it's the tool that serves you. You, you don't take Scrum because this is the, what, what everyone is doing, you know, what everyone is doing. No, no, we do Scrum because you really think and you agree that this is the best way to apply your mindset into a working environment. But anyways, uh, it's, uh, it's, there is no out of the box, as Stefan says. Uh, this one is about financial, uh, traditional, yes. Yes, that one we saw, it's pretty logical. Yes, we teach, um, think, oh, well, it's insightful. So many takes away, good, good, take it, take it to go, they're free, come on. It's like uh, walking into a fast food restaurant. 
to here or to go. So for here or to go. So yes, I hope uh, it's well, actually one hour since I started speaking. You know, I was uh, measuring my time. Oops, no, you cannot see it because of the, uh... but anyways, thanks a lot. I don't know if there's more questions, but I think, uh, yeah, that'll be it. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm open. You can add me in LinkedIn, contact me. I'm open. We can keep discussing anytime. So thanks a lot for your time. And uh, yes, yeah, I hope uh, we can get in touch sometime. Bye. Thank you very much, Ethan. And with that, we hope that we have satisfied our participant customers because you are our PMI customers. And we hope that we could um, satisfy your eager of knowing more about Agile. Um, now, um, we move a little bit to our um, PMI presentation. So this is the team who organized this meeting today. Uh, Matthias, thank you very much. And Pia, thank you a lot for, for your support, both of you. Let's move to the next slide where we want to show you our next event. So don't forget our virtual coffee talk that we have regularly. The next one is on the 8th of October, 8.30 in the morning for, for 45 minutes coffee together to talk about project management and all of the things you want to share. And then as uh, Florian said, we start um, our first um, community of practice meeting on the 2nd of November. So we hope to see you there as well. We have an open space forum on the PM book uh, version seven on the 9th of November. So please register online. And then for the volunteers among you, we will have our volunteers day on the 13th of November in Bern. If you want to have more information about future events, please join our website with the link below. And on the next slide, um, we share again the link for you to get more information about um, the uh, yeah, interesting journey of becoming a volunteer, all the things that you can do, all the people you can meet, and what it would bring you to, um, to, to participate to the organization of the events within our community. And then as a next, don't um, hesitate to join us on the social media. So we are present on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And on YouTube, you can find all our uh, online um, past events back. They will be recording. Um, I forgot to turn on my camera, but you already saw me. I think you know me. And then on the very last information we want to share is please, um, since we want to improve ourselves, improve the event, get to know the topic which are interesting for you, please, please uh, take a few minutes to fill the survey. You can uh, scan the QR code or uh, use the link. This is um, actually, we count on your voice in order to make our products interesting for you and actually our community, our topic leave from your inputs and your point of interest. For your participation today, for the people who are uh, certified at PMI, you can claim your PDUs with the code that you see there. We will share the presentation, as we said, to the participants via mail afterwards, so you will find all this information again. All right. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much, Ivan. It was a huge pleasure to organize this event with you. We are very lucky to benefit from your experience. It was very clear. Thank you all a lot and see you in the next meeting. Thank you all. Yes, always open and yes, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Thank you.
Bye. Have a good evening, everybody.